say, whenever I'm talking to people about carnivorous plants for the first time, all carnivorous plants flower to make seeds, but there are no trapping flowers. So the beautiful trumpets like this are not traps, or not flowers, sorry. They're leaves, they're modified leaves for catching bugs, but they do have flowers. So what we're looking at here are American pitcher plant flowers and specifically Saracenia leucophylla. We're gonna try and go through probably a couple of different videos because of timing and introduce you to all the different flowers of every species of Saracenia because we do have them all here and Saras uh, spring is for Saracenia flowers. So you can see that although the traps of leucophylla are generally white, the flowers are beautiful and dark red. Saracenia also always flower first. So flowers come up first and then the forest of pitchers will come up around that long after the pollinators have come by safely pollinated and left. One of the problems that carnivorous plants in particular always face is how to get your um, flowers pollinated without eating your pollinators. And so one of those ways is with time, flowers come up first. Another way is color. So a lot of the colors that we see in these plants are to attract insects. The white could be attracting a different insect than the red that the flower is attracting to pollinate. And again, these flowers never eat the bugs themselves. Their whole goal is to get pollen from another flower onto them so that they can make seeds and have more babies. But these are the beautiful dark red flowers born on tall scapes of Saracenia leucophylla. Next, I think we're gonna look at Saracenia flava. So Saracenia flava flowers look like this. Flava means yellow. And when botanists are describing species, they tend to uh, favor characteristics in the flower to differentiate species rather than the leaves. And that's because flowers are more stable things genetically than the leaves. Saracenia flower, uh, Saracenia flava comes in numerous um, pitcher colors, but the flowers are almost always yellow. Every now and then, if you get a really, really dark red atroperp flava, sometimes you'll see some oranging in the petals. Um, and some of you purists would probably say that that's some old leucophylla integration that got bred into it and it's been slowly bred out until we end up with red flavas. I still call it a flava even if the flower is orange, but yeah, there's probably some leuk in there a long time ago. Um, they are often on these tall scapes. Leucophylla doesn't really have a fragrance. Um, Flava does. I usually refer to it as a bearded iris-like smell. Um, Daniela was just regaling me with the story about how her entire family thought maybe the cats were peeing all over the house because her big pot of Saracenia flava flowers was right next to the back door and it was open and wafting in the gentle smell of Saracenia flava. It's a smell I associate with spring, but it's probably uh, not the best smell in the entire world. So maybe give them a little bit of a distance from an open kitchen door, but beautiful nonetheless. Okay, so the next flower I'm gonna talk about is Saracenia aleta. Here's some nice early aleta pictures up here. People unfairly call this a boring species because many of the early ones introduced were very pure green and vigorous and they had this kind of nasty habit of taking over your entire collection, just giant rhizomes. But there are fantastic, beautiful aletas that range in dark red, vein, black, just as beautiful as leucophylla or flata, or pretty close anyways. Their flowers are usually beautiful white like this, sometimes kind of a light green or a buttery yellow even, and they are generally more saucer shaped. The other two flowers we've seen so far, Leucophylla is a little bit more longer petals. Flava probably has the longest petals, has a very elongated looking flower. And Aleda always has these little like spaceship looking flowers. I really love them. No fragrance on these either. One of my favorite little flowers in the genus is the flower of Saracenia rubra. Uh, there are five different subspecies of Saracenia rubra. Um, I could probably tell, I can tell, individual flava clones apart from their flowers. I've worked with these plants so long that I could be like, oh, that's the flava atroperf, that's my flava bullock county. But if you lined up all the different rubra subspecies and their flowers and had them, I had to blind label them, there'd be no way. They look wildly different in the pictures, but all five sub subspecies have these cute little red flowers. They're very small compared to the other species. Um, Peter, one of the like most charming things in my childhood is Peter always dragging me over to have me smell these little flowers. 
Um, we've argued for years. I think they smell like artificial raspberries. He thinks they smell like cherry Kool-Aid. Um, but they do have a really sweet kind of like berry smell. Again, that I strongly associate with spring at California carnivores. And they make a lot of them. This is just one growth point, but a really big pot of rubra will have like, you know, tens of flowers all over it. Okay, so the last flower I'm gonna talk about today is uh, Saracenia purpurea. This is actually Saracenia purpurea subspecies venosa. Um, they all do differ. There's various different purpureas and they can differ a little bit in the flowers. Um, they have a tall scape like this that rises high up above their little squat pitchers. Again, probably to avoid eating their pollinators. Um, they have kind of rounded red petals. They can be a lot darker red than this. This is uh, red ruffles, and so it's surprising for a plant that's so dark red. Usually the flowers can be a little bit darker. I don't have any purpurea, subspecies purpurea flowers up to show you today, but I've noticed on those, particularly like the New Jersey ones, their flowers are like gently, just distantly fragrant of kind of like cedar wood. But these, these Venosa flowers don't really smell like much, but they are really super pretty. And we'll do another video with some of the other flowers. Part of the problem is they, um, the different species bloom at different times to avoid making those natural hybrids that I talked about. If they bloomed right on top of each other, they'd be more likely to make hybrids. And because many of these species do grow in the wild together, they have uh, times, different times of blooming. So we don't have any minor or sit flowers up yet. And I can't find an Oreo flower, an Oreophila flower to show you today. Not an Oreo cookie. We abbreviate that for the Oreophila. Um, but we'll do another follow-up video when the other flowers are up and we'll show you all the different flowers that Saracenia makes.